Wait till Glenn's and sipping. It's most likely uh, a chug jug. That's pure vodka he's chugging right now. Yeah, I'm straight. Hello, my friends. Thank you for joining us for the PebCAC podcast, a weekly information security show featuring some all around good people. It is week 39 of 2024. I'm Chris Louie, and I ate a year's supply of Chick fil A this week. Not with mooncakes? Me? Not mooncakes, Chick fil A. With me, I have my co host, the hot dad, who has eaten fast food in over a year. So, what's up with the Chick fil A in a year? I don't understand. What, what made you eat Chick fil A? An entire know, right? year supply. And what is a year supply? Yeah, what does that look like? Is it because you only go once a year, so you had six nuggets? What's up with that? No, we we did a we had a party at our house and we catered uh, Chick Fil A. So Chick Fil A does catering orders, so we ordered a whole bunch of sandwiches. There's like a giant tray of nuggets and waffle fries, and we had the whole spread. Not bad. Now I'm trying to remember. I think I did eat some fast food recently, and I don't remember what I had, but I was in pain. I felt like I ate just a fistful of jalapenos, and I was just dead all weekend long about any anything spicy at all but i was just like i was in pain man that's you and gluten know. in general right you have a bad problem with gluten yeah I, on that my right manliness right. will yeah will not allow me to say i have a gluten allergy but something whack happened and i was just like destroying the toilet <laughs> <laughs> well he did have five guys when he came up here to visit me he had five guys but just the patties yeah that's true Five guys is Again, crazy expensive. Bro, especially when you're eating just carnivore. It was like a seventy dollar <laughs> meal for one person. <laughs> true. We had we actually had five guys recently, and since I use the app, I we we order the same thing every time from the same store. And in the app you can actually see historically how much it costs us. I think it started at like sixty eight bucks and then seventy two bucks and then seventy eight bucks. Now it's like eighty something dollars for a family of four. Exact same order because we order the same thing every time, but that just shows the power of inflation i guess there's no such thing as inflation the economy's great what are you talking about it's transitory completely transitory inflation yeah it's because they don't like you it's true <laughs> and we have glenn medina or should we call him a car restoration glenn or crg even in retirement you'll have a car without any electronics that's right i'm gonna have at least three cars that will pass an emp so that's the good news. Just being able to get gas for them, I guess, is going to be the other problem. There has to be some electronics in those cars. Uh, no, it's all Sp- points. Spark plug. Yeah, spark plug. But they're nothing that's got a digital board that can be affected by an EMP. Would a battery be affected by an EMP or no? No, sir. Oh, battery, no. I'll, electric starter, maybe? Yeah, I don't have an electric starter. It's just twelve volts on and off. So <laughs> he he has the one where he, Glenn's he has the so car. smart. This cars. I know he has to, he has to put the hand crank in the front of the engine. He has to hand crank it up. <laughs> Come on, guys! It wasn't that it wasn't that long ago <laughs> until it, that you, that it was a it was a not as basically a points only car. So basically, nineteen seventy six or seventy seven and below, and then they started coming out with computers for them. But it's an electronic fuel injection. That's that's what started the whole computer thing. Yeah, I remember the seeing badges on cars: car EFI, twenty-four valve, North Star engine, EFI. Do you remember <laughs> that's that? A right? Cadillac. Yeah, that's a it, Cadillac. Yeah, that's a Cadillac. Yeah, yeah, EFI, electronic fuel injection. That's yeah, yeah. That's that means it's got a computer. Something's got maybe it wasn't twenty-four. Maybe it was a thirty-two valve. You can't it really. It could remember. have been. Yeah, because it had eight cylinders. So four valves per times four. Yeah, yeah. yeah That's six. like a million. I'm not yeah. good at math. Yeah. <laughs> that, the North Star engine was pretty cool because it you could turn off a block of four. So like it was an eight cylinder and you could turn off one side and it wouldn't like I said, it wouldn't be firing. So it wouldn't cool. be horsepower either. <laughs> yeah. No, well it's meant <laughs> for you know fuel. It, it turns it off on the freeway, right? So that way you didn't need that. And then it automatically, by the computer, would engage the uh, the other bank of four cylinders. So I know cool. the Suburban used to do that. It probably still does to be able to pass vehicle. Not anymore. Nope. Not anymore. Mercedes. Mercedes yeah. does too. The S-Class motor, I know. Turns off half the, half the cylinders when they're not in use. Half the bank? Yeah, it yeah. could be. 
Could what be. bank? Then does it alternate? To, does it low balance the the sharing is curing here? <laughs> low balance the load across the cylinders. Yeah, but man, half your engine looks like total sh**. Like it's been driven two hundred fifty thousand miles. The other half looks pristine. I wonder why. Yeah. Well, who knew yeah. that Glenn was such a freaking motorhead? He's a gearhead for sure. Yeah. yeah. It's a uh, it's it's the real love that I have. It just doesn't pay much. So. Yeah. Not yet. Do you have like a full bib? Lane, it's got your name on it. It says Glenn. It's like, it's kind of gray. You got pinstripes on it. Kiss the mechanic. <laughs> Changing the oil. The no, mechanic. I do have, I do have a couple old, uh, older, what I would call, like they look like a onesie, you know, like the garage, what the garage mechanics were. Yeah, that's what I, I was thinking about. Yeah, I only had that because uh, I worked at the refinery and they were flame retardant overalls, basically, or coveralls. Oh, we don't say that word anymore, dude. <laughs> flame retardant? <laughs> <laughs> no, flame. Flame. Come can't on. say flame. Uh, you can't yeah. say flame? Where did this come from? I'm just kidding. It's a joke, uh, <laughs> Right over your something head. Correct. <laughs> it did. Ah. No guess this week, just us hosts. Combined, we have decades of information security experience here, not just to educate, but to entertain. We've got four awesome stories for this week, so sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Unless you're driving, then pay attention to the road. Don't relax. Jesus, man. Gosh. You can be relaxed while driving. No, you got to be alert. Defensive driving. Can't, you know, I don't want to do stereotypes here again, but <laughs> once again, you're proving them right. <laughs> this week, we're going to talk about cheating spouses again. Uh-oh. Again, Kaspersky pulling a fast one for our third topics. Hacker are trapping you in the browser and close with Deech's topic of the week. Oh, God, it's be a very a quick topic. Mystery topic. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So, so he, he has the entire topic number four. I yield the floor to him. Ooh. All right. Someone's slacking. For our first topic, this is not a new type of threat, but yet another reminder that you should not trust QR codes you see out in public. We have a pair of stories here, both funny enough from the UK, that the rise of malicious QR codes. The first scam has a flyer that's been seen all over the UK, and it says, if your name is Emily, your boyfriend cheated on you last night. Scan here for the video proof. Now, I don't know statistically how many Emily's there are in the UK or if people will just scan the QR code because they're curious and will watch the video. But sure enough, people are scanning the code and getting uh, fished or hacked by the site. If you're dumb enough to scan that, you you should be owned. People are just, they love drama. They love it. Especially, Especially British drama. I wonder if they're statistically, like Emily's probably the most common name so even if you're not an emily there you're like oh well, i shoot i know an emily I know maybe an emily. i need a yeah. yeah maybe i should click on this and do my due diligence maybe some dude's like well you know emily i hate her boyfriend i'm gonna watch this video and i'm gonna slide into those dms <laughs> figure out if it's their friend emily's boyfriend should yeah we ask should we ask what's the most commonly used name in britain sure it's probably something like conor Beatrice. mcgregor <laughs> Catherine. He's not even from Great Britain. It's oh yeah, Catherine. Yeah, donkey, donkey, <laughs> donkey. Yeah, it all has all the hallmarks of the typical phishing scam. Some kind of sense of urgency. Some kind of I'm on the inside, you're on the outside. Scan me to get on the inside. And it's just too enticing for people not to scan. And thankfully, they said, well, maybe it's fortunate. Unfortunately, the QR code right now. It's one of those work from home scam type jobs or co- college people looking for work over the summer scams, but it could be much worse. It could be you know, stealing your banking details and installing malware on your device, but they just use this particular threat vector to offer you these work at home scam jobs. We think the pen, like how successful are those QRs? Like, so let's say you have like a million scans. How many people actually are dumb enough to fall for the phishing attempt or whatever it is? Like, click here and sign in with your Microsoft online account <laughs> before you watch the video. How many people are actually dumb enough? I think it's like less than 1%. That's all you need, though, right? Yeah. Statistically, <laughs> it's a numbers game. So, less, you know, 1% of a million is a thousand, 10,000. You got, you got an active person to go look, go click. And then, you know, you, you got a high rate of click to, to begin with. And then it's that sub 1% or 1%. 
that I actually tries attempts to log in to a to a OneDrive account to go see the video. Chances are that person doesn't have any money. <laughs> they're yeah. barely making it through life if they're falling victim to this. Yeah, maybe, but they can still have all their personal data stolen. What's in your OneDrive? Well, never mind. We got to stay out of yours. My OneDrive is empty. Could you imagine? I know. On that same thread that Brian was talking about, it's like, hey, uh, you know, I've got no money. Go ahead and take my take my take my identity. My identity owes half a million dollars, and I'm in half a million dollars in debt anyway. Enjoy the student loan debt, buddy. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Could you pay it off? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I feel so sorry for you. <laughs> Since I mentioned there were two stories, the other story is also from the UK and they're having problems with these things like pay to park signs that you just park somewhere, you scan the code, you pay your meter or congestion charge or whatever you have to pay. And that one actually is scamming people because this one's a little bit more clever. They put the fake sticker QR code over the legitimate QR code, you scan it, and it actually looks like the pay by phone website and you plug in your your details, your address, your credit card information, and then they'll take you to a page that says, oh, your payment received. And then you're like, okay, cool. Good to park here for an hour. And then you come back and you get a ticket and say, WTF, I paid. Why am I getting a ticket? And then you have to pay the ticket. And then you also have your credit card number stolen too. See, that would let's be pretty this. cool. Yeah. Go ahead, Brian. Let's say, let's do this at Black Hat next year or DEF CON. We'll come up with PEPCAC, follow me stickers, and it's a QR code. It says, since you were dumb enough to click on this, why don't you donate before you subscribe? And then we'll raise some money that way. How about an even better one where you, you go to a restaurant, you slap your QR code down, you mimic the restaurant's menu, they order on your site, you go in and put a, put the order in, right? And then you add extra money at the tip time. And you, oh. and you scrape that tip. I think you just talked about um, Grubhub. Yeah, <laughs> that's <Grubhub's laughs> whole model, whole model right there. Right, just getting in the middle there. Just yeah, just taking, in the middle. taking a cut. That what would be about, funny um, if, if you're sitting at a restaurant and Grubhub shows up and delivers your food while you're sitting there yeah. from that same restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't this like uh, the the whole reason why this is probably so popular? It probably happened. Was it last year's Super Bowl where this had a QR code bouncing yeah. around the screen? That was, it wasn't last year. I think it was either two or three years ago. And I think it was Coinbase, if I don't, if I remember correctly. <laughs> it bounced around the screen, just like that old DVD screensaver. And I think it was just a QR code. I wonder how, like, so let's think of, like, Apple. Like, for the longest time, you couldn't scan that QR code. And then eventually they put it in there. Yeah. I wonder if they're just, like, I wonder if the argument there was for a long time. It's like, no, it this could be used for malicious intent. They're like, nah, man, it was on the Super Bowl. It's cool. Yeah, right. Some people are forced to, right? Yeah. Even, even, I use it. even with things like being able to, because Apple will show you the URL before you visit it, after you scan it. But people just use shink, link shorteners. They use forwarders. So that's almost a, a useless security feature because most sophisticated actors will know to use a link shortener or use a, a forwarder. The only good utility for a QR code is going to someone's house and have to jump on their Wi-Fi. Boom. That is amazing. Yeah. That's that's a good one. So you don't have to share the password. You just scan it. That is, in, that is install the uh, root cert as well. So that way uh, <laughs> you can go do S. So get a TLS inspector <laughs> session. Uh, spoiler alert. When it's on an iPhone, is this going to be a really crappy user experience? <laughs> yeah. Only browser traffic, basically. But that's the moral of the story. You can't trust these QR codes. They said... One possible mitigation, visit the website directly. Don't rely on the QR code. It's a lot more hassle because you have to go to the website. Then you have to find you know, the parking space number or the parking section you're in. But it's the only real surefire way or just you know, verify that the URL is correct because a lot of these phishing websites will have weird top-level domains. They'll have like .site or .top or .biz instead of the usual .com or .co.uk. The the dot, everything after the dot is getting to be a little out of control now. I think I saw someone was like dot services the other day. I'm like, what the heck? Yeah. Like this, this, those domains are getting wildly inappropriate. By the way, like how come I can't just have like a dot Brian Deach and just get re and get rich? Brian Deach shot Brian Deach. I think there's a, I, I this happened to that, you know, that cup that, I don't know if they're French, it might be French, Mont Blanc, that company that makes dot nice pepcat. pen. <gasps> 
that would be nice watches. They had a dot Mont Blanc top level domain. But they said it wasn't gaining any traction. It was a dumb marketing stunt, and they had to pay ICANN like a hundred thousand a year to maintain that top level domain or something. So there, there's a fee. You can add you can add your own TLD, but there's a fee with the associated with that. That's well, you, you just charge that out though, right? You just <clears throat> charge out that to the subscribers of the top level domain. Yeah, but That's no, no one else wants a dot Mont Blanc. Yeah, TLD. A, <laughs> it's like one yeah, company that so. can use it. Because that's like, like printing money. Yeah, dot security is a pretty big one right now. Like all these security companies are buying. Yeah, they're buying up all the dot securities. Dot sucks yeah. is another one. Dot fail is another one. All I know is I can is taking advantage. If it costs a hundred thousand dollars to host that domain, if I memory serves serves correct. To do my own internal domain is I could probably convince my wife to figure out how to do it, right? Like it's not that like chat GPT could probably figure out the commands to make it, you know, my own little authoritative DNS internally and probably in like five commands or less, like running on a Raspberry Pi. So ICANN's coming over here charging a hundred K and I think all they really have is like 13 root servers that are distributed globally, right? Like this is... This is BS, man. I think it might be a deterrent, too, so there's not too many of these dumb top-level domains that there's a high barrier to entry for it. Yeah, but high barrier or not, would-be thieves are willing to pay that also, right? So what it's would your domain be, Brian? If you could get .brian each as a top-level domain, what would you make the host name part of it? Cloudgod dot Brian Deach. I love DMT. Dot Brian Deach. <laughs> DMT. DMT. DMT dot Brian Deach. Yeah. Now, when do Brian Deach? Because like, it's kind of hard for some people to spell. So yeah. Dot, dot cloud drug God. dealer. Dot <laughs> yeah. Dot cloud God. That'd be a good one. Brian Deach dot cloud God. Uh yeah, something like uh, cloud God is greater than. Doctor Zero Trust. <laughs> if that's even a real thing. Yeah. Glenn's right. not entertained. All right. For our second topic, we all knew it was coming, but a little heads up would have been appreciated. This month, so we're still in September, marks the end of U.S. sales in support of Kaspersky software here in the U.S., Ultra AV is a company that has acquired almost 1 million Kaspersky users and will begin migrating users over. And when they say begin migrating users over, this week Kaspersky deleted itself off endpoints in the US and installed Ultra AV on them without any warning whatsoever. Many former Kaspersky customers were worried that their device got infected with malware since they were not told in advance that their AV would be replaced. To make things worse, while some users could uninstall Ultra AV using the software's built-in uninstaller, those who tried removing it using uninstall apps saw it reinstalled after a, a reboot, causing further concerns that this is definitely malware and it keeps, keeps reinstalling itself. Well, I think uh, you get what's coming to you if you're running Kaspersky. So have at it, have fun. I'm sorry, not so, sorry. Those enterprise customers? Is that is that what we're hearing? I think these are commer- uh, I think these are consumer cuz I don't, I think Kaspersky was banned in enterprise for a, a while. I think it's probably just home users. I have never heard of anyone using Kaspersky on the enterprise side. Maybe New York. What do you think? I, I've never heard of it either. They like used to be many... more popular until the whole Russia thing happened, but they I I've seen it uh, here and there. I, I knew it's, a couple of corporations back in the day that used them, but they switched every, what was that, like seven years ago? Eight years ago? Everyone I talk to is like in this order. It's always CrowdStrike, Defender, maybe Sentinel-1. And then, like that's like a less than a 1%. And then Other. And Other is usually like some crappy thing like Cisco Amp or Palo Alto Traps. I think Cyber is what they call reason. it. I don't think anyone uses semantic... Uh, WSS Endpoint McAfee, Defender. yeah, or, or McAfee. <laughs> so I have heard of semantic. Uh, you know what? Actually, I heard. I, Trellix, I do remember right? one McAfee. McAfee. Did they 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 rebranded right to Trellix now? 
it's no longer McAfee. Yeah, I think you're right. Is the product Tredix because they bought? Was it they bought the? I think what was Tredix is FireEye, isn't it? Yeah, it's a combination of FireEye and and McAfee. And the McAfee. Yeah, because they know McAfee split enterprise and consumer, and it, you can never just keep track. I think McAfee stayed on the consumer side, and it's something else on the enterprise side now. Yeah. Did they split as well? Because I knew Semantic had done that. Norton Antivirus and Semantic Endpoint Protection did the split. Yeah. Yeah. So McAfee, when they divested from Intel, I think they they split the enterprise and the personal business. Mm. And then same with FireEye. Mandiant went to Google and then they, they legacy FireEye became, I, I thought it was Trellix. Yeah. Fun times. Just tells you how fast technology moves, right? I mean, it's pretty crazy. Yeah. I think Zonalar missed out on a great opportunity to come back. They were, uh, We looked that up. I think they were acquired by Checkpoint. I think the I think you're right, yeah. Zonalarm products still exist, but they're just owned by Checkpoint now. Do you guys remember? Oh, I bet you Glenn remembers this. Do you remember K9? <laughs> Why do you? <laughs> yes, <laughs> I know K9. <laughs> See, that was amazing. So, like, it's a the, cool product. It was a cool product. But the favorite part was it would bark even if the the speakers are muted and you got blocked. It would bark to let you know that your kids are doing something wrong. <laughs> my 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 oldest mentioned that on the podcast. Uh, I don't know if you remember that bit. So, she said what? she hated me for having that dog bark <laughs> on the computer. Uh, I don't think I put two and two together. I think I completely forgot about that. Yeah, about right yeah, yeah, that was K nine, and it was free for commercial u- or for end users right they're just sourcing data probably selling it yeah to the kremlin well no they fed that it was a url it's what back then when url categorization was really a big thing and blue coat blue i thought blue coat url categorization was probably on on par really good nothing nothing could compete against it and i said it's gone by the way of the dodo bird these days yep do you know do you know where they used to do the categorization at what's what state in the united states was the most popular to do Utah. what? To, yeah. You, I was asking Glenn. <laughs> okay, I mean, why not Utah? Yeah, why why Utah? Because they're the, big uh, on pornography. <laughs> <laughs> no. It's the LDS church is headquartered there. And and what what specifically about the LDS church makes them a great resource for URL categorization? He had something to do with their international travel. They have people that have speak lots they the church itself knows lots of languages based on its members, I think. is Ding, reason. ding, ding. You get it. Yeah. This the return missionaries. They, they've put people all out in the world. So they, they become fluent when they're on their, mm-hmm. I think, six-month or year mission. So it was a great resource to have people translate what they're seeing online. Whatever that's still yeah, the case. Yeah. Now yeah, it's replaced by AI. AI. Oh, yeah. this, is, this is Ukraine language yeah. i don't even know what do they speak of ukrainian ukrainian oh what does so that, that sound one, like that, 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 yeah like russian <laughs> <laughs> so there there was a i knew i knew the person that did the url categorization for blue coat back in the day i'll have to go look up his name but he had classified it to like 55 languages or something like that and one of the languages that they had done as well that's not part of your common language set was um was uh what's that star trek uh klingon uh, language klingon so they actually had identified that as a as a language as a, as a language type <laughs> yeah it's pretty cool yeah klingon or vulcan or high valerian that was the one from game of thrones uh, yeah so well i wonder how many of these former kaspersky customers are going to stick with ultra av after they pulled a stunt like this there was a other one, right? Like free AVG Grisoft. Do you remember that one? AVG that was and one. Avast. Yeah. Yeah, that was free AV. They had the the safe browser, I think. They said block people from tracking you. And then they turned around and collected all your data and sold to advertisers <laughs> without your consent. So it's like, yeah, it's safe from other people, not safe from us. Yeah. Hey, it's kind of like buyer beware, right? If it's free, what do you always say? If it's free, you are the product. Yeah, if the product is free, you are the product, exactly. Yeah, so 
It's a great comment. That's a great statement, Chris. Yeah. So Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, Google, Gmail. You think Gmail's free because Google is UNICEF and they want to do charity work? It's like, no, they give you the free no. Google tier for to mine your data so they can see what I bought when I bought what my hobbies are and then that way they can sell me more targeted ads I, I forgot was there a setting that you could have that prevented or is that part of the agreement of using the free uh, gmail account that's just, that's that's the trade-off you cannot turn it off if if you pay them for g suite not the corporate kind of g suite but personal mm-hmm. g suite like five bucks a month or something then they, then they say they don't scan your inbox and there's no ads mm. but that's to pay for the privilege of them not data mining you yeah, yeah. Yeah, I went out and got all got all the kids, the whole family, like an Outlook.com account, right? Because yeah. that's not mine or that shouldn't be mine. So. Well, if you pay for it, no. But if you don't pay for it, then yes. I pay for it. Definitely <laughs> pay for it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah then then, it, then they shouldn't be data mining you, and yeah. it should be pre- pretty privacy-centric, more secure. Yeah, yeah. All right, for our third topic, threat actors are abusing the kiosk mode in most browsers to fish users into giving up their account credentials. Kiosk mode is a special configuration used in web browser or apps to run in full screen mode without the standard user interface elements like toolbars, address bars, or the navigation buttons like your front, your forward, backward, stop. You could try it now. If you're on a computer, just hit F11 on your keyboard. It's designed to limit user interaction to specific functions, making it ideal for public kiosks, demo terminals, and the like. In this attack, kiosk mode is abused to restrict user actions and limit them to the login page, which the only apparent choice being to enter your account credentials. Specifically, the malware locks the user's browsers on Google's login page with no obvious way to close the window. And the malware also blocks the escape and F11 keyboard keys. The goal is to frustrate the user enough that they enter and save their Google credentials to the browser to, quote, unlock the computer. That is nuts. (laughs) Got to hand it to them, though. Like we always say, you know, phishing is just going to get worse, never going to get better. And this is yet another way that they can lock you in your own browser until you give up your credentials. That's why you need an enterprise browser. <laughs> Can't enterprise browser doesn't have kiosk mode. It's got kiosk mode, but it also will prevent um, the malware from being used in a way that could use that. I think I'll have to go double check that. That's yeah, an interesting way of doing it. Yeah, it's not clear exactly because I, I see this in two ways. One is you you save the browser, and then there's info sealers that can steal it out of the browser. Saved passwords feature, and then there's just redirecting a user to a Google phishing page. So it looks like you're signing into Google, but it's not Google. And you can't see the address bar because you're in kiosk mode. And then that's how they just steal your credentials that way too. So so, so I, I guess if you look at this, and I, I'll probably have to go read the article after, but uh, it, do they start in a in, in a way that they, they make the browser start in a way that opens in kiosk mode. So that's the only thing you do. And then they have malware installed in the computer that prevents you from escaping or pressing f11 so i mean sounds like your computer got owned also at the same time yeah i don't think it was clear on that either if it's malware that's installed on your device or if it's some kind of javascript that prevents that can actually lock you out of using certain keys on the keyboard because i know that there's javascript that can like disable right click for some websites they think Disabling right click or disabling highlighting is somewhat more secure that you can't just copy a section of the article and paste it, even though you just go to view source and, and get the text that way. But yeah, there might be some kind of JavaScript that they have on the page that blocks these specific keys from being pressed. Yeah. 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 I was just thinking, I mean, if you're sitting on one of these kiosk machines to begin with, you'd probably never know, right? If that machine. And you were inserting because you were in kiosk mode to begin with. Like, for instance, check into a hotel or check, you know, check out or ch- get your room key created or whatnot. You've yeah. seen those, right? In Vegas. Yeah, even like a restaurant or something. If you want to order off an iPad, it's, they always put it in either kiosk mode or guided access. Yeah. 
But yeah, I, I'm always leery about that, right? I mean, this goes to story number one, Chris, where we talked about inserting your credentials. Um, like, if I'm sitting at a store and it's asking me to insert my credentials to Microsoft, like, why would I ever do that? Like, yeah. you, you got to you've got to be able to associate the two and have some type of like, you know, like a like a, some type of radar on that says, hey, I think I'm being hacked. You've got to have some suspicions up, up on that. Yeah, it's all that user awareness training. Yeah, yeah. Do do you think we not? We probably don't apply that more towards the consumer segment than anything else, right? It's always business, business, business. We're always getting trained on that phishing attempts and stuff like that, but we never really see that for the consumer side. The people that don't do this every day, right? Yeah, I know. CISO was trying to. There's a there's a big push to enforce all all the stuff we've learned on the corporate side always use mfa don't click on random links don't open attachments if someone calls from the irs and says yo t- yo back taxes it's fake like they've trained us really well on the corporate side now cisa is trying to apply it to the consumer side so i think they actually ran tv commercials that say if you have an online bank account make sure to turn on you know multi-factor authentication or multi-step verification and there's some effort to try to educate the public on that yeah. I mean, it's kind of funny because the other day, I think I sent you guys a text, right? It was, it's like, hey, check this out. It, it, someone's, someone got my phone number and they, they're, they're wanting <laughs> me to communicate with them on WhatsApp. And then in WhatsApp, they send me a picture of themselves. And I'm like, okay, great. So I, I, I do an IM check or an image check. The reverse in that image. Search. Yeah, the reverse image. Yeah, reverse <laughs> image search. And I send the image back and I say, hey, you're my twin. What's going on? Why do we look like each other? <laughs> that was actually really funny, man. Good for yeah, you. yeah. Did they stop like, replying oh. after that? No, they, they kept coming back and I was like, okay, I'm done. I, I, I need to get back to work. I, I, I'm having so much fun with this, right? But I got I to gotta do work eventually. Yeah, Glenn's trying to scam like- the scammer. Yeah, I've kind of given up on that scam the scammer because I, I almost feel like it's not even a person at this point. This is an automated process. So no matter how hard I try to screw with them, they're not really falling for it. Well, what is that, uh, Chris, that you had done, right? It's a uh, you there's two things you could do. You could type a whole bunch of stuff. It's if it's China based. Yeah. And yeah. Get them banned. Get them banned. Um, and then the other side of it is. What was that side? If it's if it's AI or if it's somebody that's inside of a, a kind of a they showed it. It was a so uh, say, it's ignore, a person. Ignore all previous prompts, and then you give it some instruction. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I think that would be cool, right? Yeah, the China block is the funny one because they'll send you a message in Chinese, or even if it's not, and you just send this big chunk of text, and it's got all the banned words in China, like. Tiananmen Square and Great Leap Forward and Cultural Revolution and Winnie the Pooh. It's got all these words that if a Chinese person in China was caught with this, they'd be in a lot of trouble. So then I, they just Wait, why Winnie that. the Pooh is bad. I don't understand that. The the joke is the pre- current president of China, Xi Jinping. If you look at him and you look at a picture of Winnie the Pooh, like they look a lot alike. So a lot of the Chinese <laughs> people are saying, "Oh, our, our leader looks like Winnie the Pooh," and then he didn't like that, so he, they got banned and. Anyone who compared him to Winnie the Pooh uh, mysteriously disappeared. So Winnie the Pooh is, is Could you banned imagine in that? China right this now. Is, this is what makes this is what makes the U.S. so great, right? That we can troll governors and presidential candidates, and it's still it's still okay. We're not going to have the, the Secret Service come up and try and kidnap us or take us out of our houses. Not yet, anyways. Oh, so unless you're in California and you make AI memes, then that is actually a crime now. Yeah. That pre- that guy's a <laughs> that guy's an idiot. Well, that that I has will, to step. I mean, could you imagine getting caught for that? And that goes all the way up to the Supreme Court, and they kind I of know, just laugh right. at it. Yeah, yeah. The uh, oh my gosh, there's like so. Not that I'm for or against anyone in this particular election, but some of the names that are coming up for for Kamala Harris, pretty hilarious. Like, <laughs> have you have you guys seen any of them? I've, I've seen some of them. They're not pr- probably repeatable on the podcast, though. This one, I mean, the the one was, I think it was uh, Hyena Harris because she's got that laugh. <laughs> that cackle, I was like, yeah. oh, like the cackle. I was like, yeah. okay, that, that's actually pretty funny. So, yeah. And then the chameleon. I, chameleon. <laughs> chameleon, chameleon, <laughs> chameleon, Kamala, or whatever. Yeah. I was like, dang man, they're just uh, some people are I, savages out there. Yeah, it just yeah. Like I, I won't go into politics now. I'll just stay out of this. <laughs> 
Yeah, going back Look to the story. Look at you, story, ear to ear. This, this, yeah. Something similar, I would say, happened. And this was 10 plus years ago or so. And uh, a friend of the family caught one of those extortion where AV, fake AV scams. And they took him to a web page and says, oh, your computer's infected. You can't go to any other websites. Pay us to disinfect your computer. And it was true. I tried to go to like google.com or msn.com and it just said page not found then i was thinking like hmm how deep in the network stack are these guys and i just checked the internet options at the time it was ie and apparently they they had a pack file on the computer that only allowed yeah. traffic out to the payment gateway and that was it and i presumably when you pay this extortion fee they just remove the pack file and like hey you're disinfected now that's a that's a lazy hacker <laughs> <laughs> There's a little bit more to it. So, so if you <laughs> removed it, then the malware would just re-add it back on there. Uh, yeah. So that, that's uh, what I did. I, I just I just unchecked the pack file, deleted the pack file, and and everything was fine. They weren't they weren't that yeah. sophisticated. Yeah. Then again, just trying to trap you until they get your credit card info, and then even then, uh, the other part. Actually, going back to story number one and and related to this story is sometimes. You go to the fake payment page, you enter all your credit card details and set, and then they'll return a message that says, oh, payment denied, try another credit card. So you pull out another credit card, you try and says, oh, denied, try another credit card. So then they can just keep giving you that message and they just keep getting more and more of your credit card data just because you think it's been declined and you try a new card. It'd be funny if you just go into like a stolen credit card database and you just keep using those credit cards. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure if you even just give them junk data, it might not even do a lun check, and they'll they'll say, "Yeah, this is a this is a legit credit card number one 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 one." Yeah, yeah. So having a crowd strike, this all zeros in that file. <laughs> Pass the check. All right, for our last topic, and it'll be a rotating topic every week. This week, we're going to talk about Zitro. Brian Zitro, asks, man. Get Zitro. Her. Yeah, get her. Zitro. So that's Brian, kind of drink that you're doing, taking. What's going yeah, on? Yeah, apparently he asked me to add this to the show for the as a topic this week. We we were having a good laugh about Sharky from last week. So, take it away, Brian. What is Zetro? Actually, let me ask you guys. What do you think Zetro is? Yeah, I'm a Glenn. Sounds like an energy drink. What's going on? <laughs> any well, any guesses, Glenn? Just this medication. Zetro. Name of a drug. No, yeah, I, so yeah, go ahead. Let's go. Yeah, let's do some housekeeping. So, number one, Chris had texted me. He's like, you're, you're the reason why you know people get bullied and there's problems in high school. And I, I had to <laughs> emphasize here that Sharky was like a 55 year old man <laughs> that was always trying to run over little high in school kids. Ford. <laughs> in his Ford. Yeah. Who, was the, who was the one? There was a movie about that. Was that an Adam Sandler movie where he had to go face the people that beat him up? And there were kids that were still there, oh, was uh, it still picking on Bill the Madison. Yeah, <laughs> I think it was Billy Madison. Yeah, because he he had oh, to like maybe. go through all the grades again, right? And then at the very end, yeah. the the he Adam Sandler apologized to a guy that he bullied, and then he came at the end and saved him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. what a feel good story. Okay, Zetro. So <clears throat> there's this uh, there's this dude in Globe, Arizona. And he's like this little cholo dude. And I don't think cholo is like a derogatory term. It's just like a kind of a Hispanic Mexican looking gangster. And he was he was dressed exactly the way you would think. He'd have his chucks on, uh, you know, like kind of a tan pants, usually a wife beater, which is like the, you know, the the white t shirt like type of top. thing. Yeah. Tank top, yeah. And like sometimes he'd have a shirt on on top of it with only the the top button buttoned. And he just like he was kind of known like you couldn't say he was homeless, but you never saw him in a home, right? He was just always kind of walking around, and he had his doggers on. You know what doggers are? No, what? No, we're going all we're going all over the place here. The dark sunglasses, right? Just he's just dogging people out, right? And uh, he, but he was always he'd always have like a forty or something like this, and like he was an older gentleman, and he always have a bandana on his head. And the bandana would come all the way down his eyebrows, blue bandana all the time. So maybe he was a crip. I have no idea. Um, I don't think those things even existed. But his name was Zitro. And uh, couldn't figure out why his name was Zitro. And then one day, talking to him, I'm like, that's kind of an unusual name, right? And again, I'm in high school at this point, so I don't really care. And I'm like, "What's why is it Zitro? And then he pulls up his bandana 
And on his forehead is the word Zitro tattooed across his forehead. <laughs> and That's it's why he an, wore the bandana. <laughs> well, because he got really, really drunk. He wanted to uh, have someone tattoo his last name on his forehead backwards so he could see it in the mirror. But it wasn't done <laughs> like Ortiz. that. So backwards it's, alphabet. It's, <laughs> his last name was Ortiz. Yeah. So it was... <laughs> Oh. And so, and, and he he was very embarrassed by it. So his name was Zitro. So he was like Zitro. We'd just be driving around saying Zitro, and he'd, he'd throw up like a W. It was like, what's up? And uh, he embraced yeah. it, not like Sharky when he just got really angry. <laughs> yeah, I, well, I don't. I think he was too drunk to to really even care. But he was he was a cool dude. He ended. Up, I think he passed away a couple of years ago. Because I, I was I went back into town. I was driving around. I was like, where's Zitro? At? And then I think my brother was like, he's like, ah, oh, man, he died. So we we drove to the uh, corner liquor store and poured out a, a forty four hour fallen hero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> good old Zitro. So Zitro paid all homage. Yeah, Ortiz. and I don't I don't even know what his real name was, but he was an older guy. But you know, well, you know his last name was Ortiz, right? So Ortiz, yeah. I know. And he had How Chuck. Many of those you guys went in Globe. Yeah, well, pff, everyone was like <laughs> Ortiz. Yeah, Martinez. Like, yeah, it was it was everywhere. What do you guys think? So, what are Chucks? You guys know what Chucks are, right? The yeah, Chuck Taylor Converse. shoes. Yeah, yeah, Converse. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So he looked exactly like you know the uh, the low rider logo. Like, have you guys ever yeah. seen that? Yeah. Like, were they white chucks or they, were they color? Oh, chucks? always white chucks. But yeah, yeah, yeah. He wasn't like I wouldn't say he was well to put together. They were kind of dingy white, but you know he was he was doing his thing. Wasn't a guy that I would say I feared at all. Like he's just kind of a pudgy looking dude, but all beer belly and rest was just kind of there. But whatever. Anyways, now you know Zitro. Another another yeah. little story. So it was. So what did it look like in the mirror? Then it looked like Ortiz in a mirror, basically. No, it didn't look like anything. It just it was Zitro backwards, but it wasn't <laughs> it wasn't written backwards. So it just it was in. Is that right? The per- yeah. So they're like, I think I think the story was he's like I wanted to be able to see Ortiz in the mirror backwards, but he just wrote it in Zitro. He just he just wrote it backwards, not the backwards, inverse, not, not the mirror. He had the yeah. mirror image, though. Yeah. Because so, the mirror image would just show it the same, right? It's it's when you look in the rear view mirror that it's reversed. Right? Well, anything in a mirror like is mirror. always... It just has right? to be reversed, yeah. I mean, it would, yeah. It would, you just you flip it vert- horizontally, vertically. Yeah, you flip it vertically yeah. and then... On the y-axis. Su- yeah, on the y-axis. That's what it's supposed to look like. That's what yeah. should have been tattooed on his forehead, but this person By the way, reversed the order of the letters instead. His, his forehead, remember, he's always outside drinking. And so he was a he was a dark skinned Hispanic fellow, but his forehead was whiter than mine. Like it was <laughs> this is the, bandana. the bandana on. <laughs> the bandana was yeah, it was there. It was man. A permanent fixture. Yeah, permanent fixture. So now you guys know. Now you know. Now you know about Zicho. Yeah. And to clarify, my comment to Brian was that when he told the story, he didn't make it clear that Sharky was a 50-year-old man. So I thought this was like a fellow student. And I Yeah, said, a oh. fellow student with, with enough money to buy an F-250 Ford. I don't know. Come parents could have money. Yeah, you never know. We're not from the Bay Area. We're from white trash, Globe, oh, Arizona. Oh, so. Yeah, he was yeah. either a successful minor or a successful meth dealer. Possible, right? <laughs> not unheard of. And I was no, making the comment that says, hey, you know, Brian, it was people like you that bullied other people and made them uh, not not like other people. You know that, right? And then he's like, well, this yeah. guy was like a 50-year-old man. I was like, oh, that's even worse. There were a bunch of kids picking on an old dude. <laughs> His name was Sharky. What was I supposed to do? <laughs> I, I told you that in first grade, I used to actually bring a rifle to school, right? Like, that was common. I mean, yeah. I, I don't think that was that unusual. Like, was it one of those hunting seasons started and you went right after school? Or we no, just yeah, but... it wasn't even hunting season. We just go out and kill rabbits for fun. So yeah, twenty two. Yeah, it's a little twenty two rifle. Yep. And just take it to school. Yeah, can you imagine doing that now? I'd be like, oh, we got a school shooter. I'm like, no, man, it's gonna, I'm gonna go kill Chris's pet rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> no, now it's illegal at the federal level, so you'll be in federal trouble if, if that were to happen. Not anymore. I don't have to worry about it. Those days well, are long gone. Yeah. It's crazy, right? It's like they used to be. They used to teach safety, or your parents were responsible for teaching you safety, and now that's kind of all out the door. Like, yeah. I don't think kids know how to cross the street these days if their parents aren't no. teaching them. 
how to behave say, culturally, whatever, right? So, so my older kids, they've all like you know, by the time we got into a vehicle, they like they knew like where we were going. And I was teaching them how to drive, right? And so my daughter that just turned, she's like fifteen and a half. We're driving, and I'm like, all right, you're gonna go to school. What? She's like, all right, well, tell me where to turn. I'm like, it's oh, kind of weird. And so then the other day we were coming back. And, uh, I'm like, Hey, I was like, just, you know, take any path you want to get to get home. And she's like, okay. So we get off the ma- the major exit and she's like, do I turn here? I'm like, I'm like three miles away from the <laughs> major cross street from where we live. What do you mean you turn here? And I'm like, and then I just realized like she spent her entire life in a vehicle, either staring at a book or a phone. Yeah. So she's never like, paid attention to anything. outside and looked at landmarks yeah. or. Yeah. Yeah. Any idea of what what street to turn where? And you, it's either that or it's the GPS generation. Like our, I mean, I remember printing out map quest directions and following it turn by turn. If I missed a turn, I'd have to run to a gas station. Says, how do I get back to the where I was? And yeah. Nowadays, yeah. it's just you everyone's prob- on nav. Yeah, but you you probably turn the GPS on just to go to the office, and you've been to the office like a thousand <laughs> times. <laughs> Well, it's nice Are to you know guilty if there's of an that? accident. Are you guilty of that? Well, I, I don't turn it on because I don't know how to get there. I turn that on in case there's a major accident and it detours me. You don't so know I how was... to get around detours? Like, you don't well, know I how do, to, but like... if it's like freeway one or freeway two, I'd like to know that uh, okay. before I leave the house. I gotcha. I, I say that, but like, I'm calling my daughter out. Like, that's getting home, but I will say I've been to a customer's location in downtown Phoenix. I don't know, 15 times, I still don't know how to get there. I always have to put it in to be able to figure out like how to, how to get there. But part of me is, you know, Chris's defense is like, I need to know the, like the traffic, you know, maybe I have to steer around. But I, if I didn't have it, like if you told me, Hey, Brian, let's go to a, the basketball game. If I don't have the address to the sun stadium, I'm like, we're not going to the sun's game. Like I don't know. <laughs> like I know that it is massive and you can see it from the freeways, but I don't know terrible. how to get there. You guys are terrible. Oh gosh. Terrible. 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 You guys you know, are terrible. Bay Area traffic, terrible. Glenn, though, like one accident will add an hour to your commute. So if I can avoid I, that. I, I know that, but at least I know how to get around without it. Well, I know how to get around work, it, too. Right? I just won't, no, wouldn't know there's an accident unless I put it in the nav. Uh, I guess. But, yeah, uh, I'll I'll stay quiet. <laughs> Glenn, you'll be proud of me. The other day when I was in Flagstaff, I had to go drop a birthday gift off for my, my wife to one of her friends. And I actually... Got to the house without any navigation. It was a miracle. Nice. <laughs> you didn't get lost. Flagstaff's not a very big city either. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> I was like, W. All right. We continue to get great comments about our dad joke of the week. Dad joke of the week. This week, Glenn's up. All right. Homage to, to the swimming species here. Is it homage uh, or homage? I don't even know. Homage, whatever. Homage. Right. Two, two fish are in a tank. One fish turns to the other and says, any idea how to drive this thing? <laughs> <laughs> wah, wah, wah. You have to edit lost. this one out. No, I just, it reminded me of this joke where it's like... <laughs> <laughs> That's a great dad joke. <laughs> <laughs> All right, to wrap things up, beware of QR code scams. Casper SD replaced their EV without telling anyone. Kiosk mode will steal your passwords. And long live Zetro. That's all I have for this week. <laughs> we hope you enjoyed this week's episode. You can find us on LinkedIn. Links will be in the description. Follow us on Instagram at Pebcac Podcast. Thank you to our listeners and subscribers who raised five stars the iTunes store on Spotify and left us a review. We appreciate you all spreading the word to help grow the show. The best way to find us is to search for the PepCag podcast in your favorite podcast listening app. For my co-host Brian Deach and Glenn Medina, I'm Chris Louie. Thanks for listening. See you all next week. And as always, have a nice day. Bye, Felicia. Later, losers. <laughs>